This session now is about uh, share your model, public models in Transcribus. We always had some models available, but more for demonstration purposes. We were a bit cautious to come up with larger models because, of course, you read German current and then you expect that it can read really all kinds of German current or English writing or whatsoever. And for historical documents, I think we are still rather far away from having general models which are really uh, powerful and, and which behave like uh, um, models for maybe modern documents or, or like for OCR for printed documents. However, I think it is important also for the community to see and to give you the possibility to share your model. And um, so you will nowadays find, I think, something like 25 models already in Transcribus, mostly based on large amounts of uh, documents. And I'm very grateful that uh, some colleagues are now willing to um, show you how they produced these larger models and, and what the background is. Uh, that's also, of course, very important um, to see in which uh, context such uh, models uh, are created. The first one who will um, introduce us his model is Achim Rabus from the University of Freiburg, and he's working with Slavic documents. All right. I'm a Slavist, and I'm interested in Church Slavonic, Maybe not very many in the audience are interested in Church Slavonic, but I would like to propose a, s a specific workflow for producing these models. I have two generic models. The first one is for Russian so-called Polo stuff, uh, which is for 16th, 15th century uh, writing. The CRR of the model is 3.8%. I used uh, 170,000 tokens for training. And the second one is a really generic model with more or less a similar CER, but considerably more tokens in training data, almost 400,000 uh, tokens in training data. And this model is capable of transcribing manuscripts written in so-called Ustav, which is the oldest writing system down below, as well as manuscripts written in Pulu stuff, as you can see here. So this model is capable of m transcribing old manuscripts from the 12th century and also models uh, manuscripts from the 15th, 16th century. This is kind of a generic model. Of course, as I, I told you before, those who attended the large model uh, workshop these models introduce some hypocorrect forms because, of course, uh, there was linguistic change between the 12th and the 16th century, and the model learned certain linguistic features from one period of time and tried to apply it to another period of time. This is a drawback of generic models, but I think it's better to have one than to have none. And I would like to propose this so-called recycling approach, which means I didn't produce ground truth manually at all. I just browsed the internet and copied freely available electronic editions. As well, I asked a couple of colleagues who produced editions in printed form to send me their word, word files, and I used these word files to train the model. I copy-pasted it after some pre-processing into Transcribus and ran the model training. And I think this is a, quite a reasonable approach because there's so many world files around. Yeah. And you all know from your community who is a more, say, conservative colleague who produces editions in the, the traditional way. But if we could reuse and recycle these sources, we would all be better off. And this is my recommendation for, all, for you all. Thank you very much.
conditions to introduce the ground truth. And for example, uh, artists tend to fill in uh, abbreviations or modernize language. Did you have this problem? Yes, we did. But in my field, uh, people tend to uh, to produce very faithful, linguistically faithful editions. So there's no normalization and no emendation. But of course, we we introduce noise due to heterogeneous editorial principles. But in my experience, more data is better than no noise. What was your experience with the diacritic recognition? Diacritics is difficult, and in parts of my training data, the editors resolved to omit all diacritics altogether, which is the model learned to ignore acut and things like that, which is not very good, but in the first model, this is the case. The second one has some diacritics, and this is, well, everything what is between the lines, in my uh, experience, is, is difficult for transcribers. I actually have a, a comment. I think this is a very helpful um, method, but sometimes you don't have the print uh, text available, but it would still be much easier to, to train um, on a ground truth, I mean, to create a ground truth from the print edition, but then what you would have to do is export them as pages and, and then use them as TI for manuscripts, as T2I for manuscript, right? So. In that case, maybe the... You're talking about scanning printed editions to produce ground truth, right? Yes? Yes, more, no, not just the ground truth. To, to, you, to prepare um, the text from in transcribus for the printed edition, which will be much easier. And yeah. then you can use the output of that for, for manuscript editions, uh, for manuscript uh, copies yeah. of the same text. Sure. Yeah, that's a sensible workflow, definitely. Yeah. Except that uh, this means a feature request to, to extract the text in per page uh, segments. But Transcribers can do that, isn't it? So it, it, Transcribers has a feature to export uh, the transcription to Word or XML or whatever. That's not mm, Right, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one uh, is uh, Stefan Satthammer here from the University of Innsbruck and uh, he will talk about Neo-Latin documents. Yeah, I now will tell you something about our model we trained inside the project Noschemus, Nova Scientia, Early Modern Scientific Literature and Latin. Let me say a few words about the background of this model. The project Noschemus um, tries to decisively ad advance our understanding of the interrelation of Latin and scientific literature in the, mo in the early modern times. Um, the main output um, of the project are a couple of monographs, a database with about 1,500 representative texts in terms of chronological spread, literary forms and scientific disciplines, and the so-called digital source book. In this digital source book, we want to make all those 1,500 works which are in the, our database machine readable and we want also to implement the keyword spotting. A quick overview of the ITER our model went until now. As a first step, I tried to create one special or individual model for each century our project deals with. This means I created one model for the 15th century, for the 16th, for the 17th and the 18th century. Each of these special models consists about at least 300 pages and those 300 pages are taken from at least four or five different works or books. The works uh, selected for the training data were selected um, with the aim of ensuring they are representative in terms of chronological spread and used typefaces. As a second step, when I had a couple of individual models available, I merged those individual models to one general model um, called Noscemus uh, general, general, model, general Model Version 1. As an example, here I have the special model for the 17th century. The training data consists of about 70,000 words and about 10,000 lines. The character error rates for the training data are 0.31% and for the validation set 0.62%.
In this model, pages are included of the following five books. You can see I tried to select some books from the beginning of the century, from the end of the century, and from the middle of the century. There in December the last year, I had three special models um, finished and available, and then I merged them to the general model. The general model consists about 170,000 words in the training data set and about uh, 30,000 lines. The character error rate for the training data 0.66% and for the validation set 0.95%. Uh, Although the model is tailored uh, towards transcribing uh, neo-Latin texts set in, uh, set in antiqua based typefaces, um, I made the experience that very good results are also possible um, with texts in other Roman languages like English, Italian or French. Our model is also able to handle some passages or some words in Greek and some passages or some words uh, set in German fraktur. I tried to follow those transcription guidelines and to give the user a maximum of freedom, standardization in the transcription process have been kept to a minimum. Normalizations have been implemented only in the following cases, ligatures and abbreviations have been expanded. The long S was transcribed as a normal S. Small caps weren't marked as small caps, but were transcribed as majuscules. And uh, special characters like the sign for et, the ecadauta, and those were also kept for the purpose that the end user has at the maximum of, of freedom. There are at the moment a couple of known issues. There are occasional inconsistencies in the transcription of quotations marks, punctation marks, and diacritics. The error rate for transcriptions of Greek words or passages is still high. Um, the main problem there lies in the vast amount of different, different Greek typefaces that were used in the early modern times. To a lesser degree, also in passages and words which are set in German fraktur, the error rate is not the best at the moment, but I'm working on it and I'm hoping that I can uh, publish an updated version of our model in a couple of, of months. Yeah, thanks. Any questions? Maybe just as an explanation, these are books, printed documents. Yeah. Uh, did you try to expand the special characters? Sorry? Did you try to expand the special characters? Um, I had the earlier version when I, where I expanded the special characters, um, but I find, uh, for the final uh, uh, version I decided to keep them because although um, many editors wish to standardize the edition they, they are going to make, but often they want to keep especially these special characters like the ECAO data and so forth. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Now, Günther Hackel will show us some public models. Günther is the second Günther in the Transcribus team, and therefore called often George. And uh, many of you probably already had contact with him. He's one of the programmers and also does a lot of project management, and uh, he was working with documents mainly uh, from the NewSci project. Hello, I want to present the NewSci project, and more important, the uh, uh, public models which uh, are and will be created during the, this uh, project. So the motivation is that historical newspapers are really a great knowledge base for the scholars, general public, as well as the humanities researchers, but uh, the access to them is limited, and also uh, tools are missing which, uh, with which you can investigate on them. So therefore, this project came up, and uh, it runs until next year in April. Uh, there are partners involved, and. Uh, one speciality is that uh, we have three types of partners. On the one hand, libraries, 
computer scientists and also humanities researchers so that they really can try immediately the tools which came up in the project and give feedback immediately. So it's not always easy, but uh, I think it's worth to have them also in this project. Here are some examples of the newspaper pages. And uh, our group deals mainly with data generation. So we use transcribers for this task. So we have to, on the one hand, create ground roof for all the, these research activities like layout analysis, uh, text recognition, article separation named entities. And we have also to process 1.5 million pages uh, till the end of the second year. So and as a first public model, the team in Rostock has trained one neural net for layout recognition of newspapers. It's already available uh, via the layout recognition tool in transcribers. And of course, we also trained some model for text recognition. Here you can see examples for the trained model. So now this was also a training for you. I think tomorrow you all can read a German newspaper at the breakfast. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Please let me know. We took not the easiest training data, so it's from all over the time periods and uh, all kind of images, good and bad images. And these are the statistics of these ground roof samples. We have around 442,000 words in the training set. And there is some interesting statistics. If you take the statistic of the German language, which says that the word has 6.5 characters in a word in average, then you have almost 3 million characters. And if you then uh, know that the character E, for example, is distributed in this uh, language statistic 17% uh, of all characters, then you have uh, almost half a million representations of the letter E in this training set which is uh, quite a lot. But of course, uh, seldomly letter like Q is only represented uh, around 600 times in this uh, set. It's just a funny statistic. So we are quite satisfied with the results. As we heard already in the morning session, uh, the guys from the linguistic department use this public model for their Alpine journal. And also someone took this data and trained a Tesseract model, for example, in Germany, and also others use it right now. And uh, hopefully we get uh, two other. It are free exactly because the National Library of Finland has uh, Swedish and Finnish in the project, both languages. So we should get three other public models yeah, during the course of the project. And the PNF uh, uh, should follow uh, very soon, so for the French. And uh, here I want to show that uh, you can also create article ground roof with transcribers. So it was a really a challenge to make such a huge page. At least you have some colorful poster for your office. If you <laughs> uh, but hopefully we have also some article model which we can make publicly available if it works as expected. So this is an ongoing research uh, and will last some time till there are really good results. But of course the ground roof is there. And here are some other enhancements which we created in this project which where transcribers benefits from the project because we made an IOB export and as well as an import so for the named entities. Uh, where you can also use uh, already existent uh, ground proof and also the annotation feature uh, is really getting enhanced. Yes, that's more or less uh, the created public models in this 
project in the new site. Any questions? What's IOB? IOB, IOB it's a format for the named entities. It's inside, outside, beginning. It's the short name of this. Just out of curiosity, uh, I have not understood the purpose of this multicolored <laughs> It's just, uh, yeah, it's just an illustration of the articles inside this newspaper page. So each different color is an own article, and uh, it's just to present it in a human uh, viewable way. So for the computer, it's uh, just uh, IDs in the page XML, but to let the user also see what articles are separated we have these different colors for each article. Yeah? So how does this work uh, relate to the color uh, model that's in the interface? No, this is something uh, different. So the uh, team in Rostock, the University of Rostock, will take these uh, ground roof, article ground roof, and make an own training out of these uh, ground roof. It's, uh, yeah, it's also machine learning, but uh, a different attempt. Yeah? I've got the microphone, so um, I've got a position of power here. Um, so I, I wondered whether you were using OCR specifically for this and not HTR, and if so, um, mm. which kind of OCR was being used? Um, yeah. And also, I'd like to know a bit more about the layout analysis and how that works, and if it's automated for picking out the the columns of articles that mm. you're transcribing, and are you, are you separating those somehow from one another, or, or are you exporting everything off the page altogether, if you follow me? So we used OCR, the every fine reader, at the beginning to get the first version of the text and then corrected this text for the machine learning. So it was the first step, and uh, for the layout recognition, it was trained on lines, on baselines only. So in this project, the uh, use case is you first recognize all lines. Afterwards, you recognize the text. Afterwards, you recognize the articles. And only after you recognize the articles, you draw the text regions around articles. The focus is not to recognize text regions at the very beginning during the layout recognition but only after article separation. So the trained layout model for newspapers uh, concentrates on lines and not on text regions. Okay, thank you. And, uh... Finally, we will hear something from the National Archives of the Netherlands. Hello, everyone. I'm going to make the presentation for our newest public model. For the last two years, uh, our team in the digitization department has conducted many experiments with purpose to create a model which will be able to transcribe Dutch handwriting documents from the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. After many attempts, research, and experiments, our team finally managed to create a new public model that is available via Transcribus platform and we call it Iceberg. Model Iceberg summarizes more than 1.5 million words and more than 800 different handwriting styles, around five scans per handwriting type. In order to reach a point that we will be able to produce a reliable model like this, we created many data sets with various material. This way, Iceberg is a dynamic combination of two models that respectively has been trained with VOC documents from the 17th and 18th century and notorial deed documents from the 19th century. Here you can see some image samples from the material that we have used, VOC documents from the 17th century, here as well, VOC documents from the 18th century and 19th century notorial deed materials from the North Holland's Archive and eight other state archives in the provinces.
Our approach was quite simple. At first, we categorized the available scans into three different datasets. The first dataset contained VOC material from the 17th and 18th century. The second dataset has been trained with 19th century notorial deeds material from the North Holland's archive. And the third with notorial deeds from eight different state archives. For the training process, we used almost 6,000 scans in total, which correspond to more than 7,400 physical pages. Every model has been trained with HDR Plus and 1,000 epochs. For the test set, we used additionally 60 scans, one scan per every 100 pages. The results that we managed to extract on the, valida on the validation set were quite promising with an average CR at 5.15. Finally, we combined these sets into one and we created the public model iceberg. Although despite the ambitious results, model testing was essential in order to confirm the model's efficiency. As you can see in this table, we created six different datasets that every one of them contains special characteristics such as different handwriting styles, different origin, and have been created at different time periods. The training results were actually remarkable with the lowest CER level at 6.45 and the highest at 8. So, these results lead us to the conclusion that public model iceberg can be very useful for users who want to process archives from the 17th until 19th century and also can be used as a reliable base for training HDR materials. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot. Uh, I especially like the name. Maybe you could use it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I especially like the name Iceberg. Yeah. I also am looking forward sometimes for a model called uh, Swiss Knife. <laughs> or something else which is then really capable to read everything. Uh, are there any questions? I, I think you also published a model in August last year. The M3? I, yes. Yep. Um, can you tell the differences between those two? M maybe. Miss Kaiser can help me. I think that contained only one third of the branches from uh, this model is three times as big. Well, I can confirm it works because it, I tried yeah. it. So it, it's much better. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So. W one remark from my side: uh, large models are often not better from the character error rate, but they are more robust. So you can feed more different uh, styles to a model and they will still provide good results. And more special models often have better CER rates but are not uh, uh, so robust.